Weather, it's time to talk Indiana tax rates for 2023. The, the core rate, the flat tax rate of 3.23%. Looks like it's not changing. So there's not a lot of complicated things to talk about with Indiana. However, it's a, a good state to do an example video on because you have local tax to deal with. And you also have local tax rates that have changed. So Indiana did uh, put this department on notice out here in October of this year, and they do have the projected rates for all the counties. They notified, uh, they notified us which ones might have uh, changed or gone. They all went up, the ones that changed. <clears throat> I did review them, and we have them all in here. And I highlighted the ones that went up. So if you, if you live in any of these counties in Boone, you're up to 1.7% local tax. If you're in Johnson or Knox, Laporte, um, Monroe, it's all the way up to two. Like the, you can see also like which states are the highest taxed. You can kind of colorize this a little bit. Um, which counties are, are the highest tax in Indiana. You can do this and you can kind of mess around and do conditional formatting if you want to say like, do I live in a county that's taxed a little bit too high in Indiana? We'll have um, red be a high number and green be a low number. And I'll show you that Cass County at 2.9 is probably the most expensive there, 2.57, 2.68. And some of the lower ones are Hamilton, Harrison, I even saw a couple below 1%, yep, down here, Pike and Porter. So all the, the county rates are in here. And what you do in Indiana is you fill out the, uh, the Indiana, the WH-4 exemption. It's going to ask you how many exemptions you're claiming, you, and if you have any, uh, any dependents, and you get a total exemption number on line five. That's where you put this. This person has one in this example. You also have qualifying dependent exemption. So that's a separate type of de dependent that you'd have to look in the table to see if you actually have that. That's line six. I didn't add the adopted child one. It's even more money. I was like, the example they provided made me laugh because it was like, it has someone with like five kids and three adopted kids is, is the sample in here. <laughs> look at this. They're like, they're like, okay, uh, an employee is paid $800 a week. He or she claims five exemptions. I bet you it's a she if it's going on here and subject it to a county rate of 1%. He or she claims three additional dependent exemptions and to adopt a child. Wow. All right. Well, if you're adopting kids and you need the additional adoption, I would just put them in the qualified dependent line. That's still going to give you a reasonable credit on the wages against them. It's just not the maximum one that the adopted credit has, but Am I going to change the whole file to add a third thing for adopted kids in Indiana? That's just a really, really special one-off thing. And it's a kind of an interesting thing that they added this table just for adopted kids. I don't know whether they're trying to encourage adopting kids and bringing them to Indiana or I don't know. Um, but the point is, is that's all you have to do is fill this out, put your exemptions here, um, or qualifying dependent or our regular personal exemption. You do not have to choose a filing status in Indiana, but you do have to choose a county. Let's And, and the counties are going to show up with the state abbreviation first. So anything with IN in front of it is in Indiana County. And the rate will change unless Indiana is a 1.7. I guess Indiana is also. What about CAS? Yeah, CAS is a 2.95. So it changes after you, you click it. And you look at the pay stub, it will also show up on the pay stub as which county is getting taxed. That's, that's a high percentage there, Cass, right? So that's Indiana. You just fill out your WH-4. You, you take 3.23% off of the taxable wages. And the taxable wages are figured out um, right here just by deducting the number of personal exemptions and dependent exemptions. And then everything times 3.23%. So there you go. That is Indiana with a lot of counties and it's updated. We were revised as of October 22, that release. So we are moving on to Kansas next. Although I did realize we start talking about Indiana and Kansas. It makes me think of football. I realize it's already Thursday and I haven't done the NFL algorithm yet. So I think I'll take a break from States to do the NFL algorithm next. Um, but we are making progress. We're up to the letter K and I'm really impressed with, I'm impressed with how um, I'm impressed with how many of the states are already up to 2023 publishing, and that is just really helpful because um, 
I mean, we've, we've gotten a bunch done and we only have a few. I'm waiting for to see if Illinois will uh, will publish anything new for next year. As of right now, I didn't see it yet. So they're probably keeping their rates the same as, as last year, but we just don't know yet. So we will be on to Kansas after football. All right, that's payroll in Excel and Google Sheets. We are making payroll easy. That's what we're doing. We're making it so. So enjoy your time in Indiana and the crossroads of America. I'm sure I will be driving through that state at some point in the near future. It's tough to avoid. All right, good luck. Payroll should be easy. Make it so.